everyone, welcome back to One Cent Sports Cards YouTube channel. I am back with another set guide and review, and this time it is for the uber popular 2021 Bowman Chrome. And the question on all collectors' minds is who are the first Bowmans we're going to be chasing? What are the big autos? And most importantly, is this set a late season must or a little bit of a bust? Well, it's time to find out in this One Cent Sports Cards. 2021 Bowman Chrome Set Guide and Review. So welcome into this 2021 Bowman Chrome Set Guide and Review. We've got pennant races in full effect, and we finally have the follow-up to Bowman Baseball. It's Bowman Chrome, and what we're trying to do in this Set Guide and Review is figure out how good Bowman Chrome really is. We do that by using the exclusive One Cent Sensational Set Ranking. Here's what that is. First, it is the most in-depth ranking system you're going to find anywhere on the internet. We break Bowman Chrome down into 10 different categories, everything from cost value to the auto checklist to the parallels. You name it, we're going to break it down into a category and give each category 1 to 10 points. Then what we do is we add up all those points at the end and use the scoring system over on the left of your screen to give the set a one to five star rating. The higher the star, the better the set. Then what we'll do is we'll compare the 2021 set with the 2020 Bowman Chrome set that was released last year to see if the set is getting better, see if it's getting worse, and we'll compare Bowman Chrome to all of the other sets that have been released so far in 2021 to see how good it stacks up against this year's competition. So, one more thing before we begin. Be sure to throw me a thumbs up. That's the best way you can support the channel. And if you like these set guides and reviews, be sure to subscribe to the channel because we do them for all of the major releases that come out during the card season. And finally, if you want to be the first to see them, hit that bell notification so you can get these as soon as they are released. So let's begin. 2021 Bowman Chrome. Here's what we're going to cover off on. First, we're going to start with the overall set highlights, what the set has to offer from like a 10,000 point view. Then we'll cover off on the different buying formats that you can get Bowman Chrome in this year. Dig a little bit deeper. We'll go into the key cards that we're going to be chasing out of the set. Dig even deeper. Go to the parallels, inserts, relics, autos. And I'm even going to tell you six teams that I think you should be targeting in breaks. A very popular break product that we have here with Bowman Chrome. So we'll figure out who the best team is, who's going to hold the most value, even give you a couple sleepers. So stick around for those. Finally, I'll give you what my positives and negatives of the set are, kind of what my opinions are. And that will lead us to the one cent sensational set ranking where we're going to find out how good 2021 Bowman Chrome really is. And then we'll finally share all of the set rankings to date to see how it stacks up against all of the other sets so far this season. So for Bowman Chrome, here are the set highlights. First thing you need to know, it is the shiny expansion set for the 2021 Bowman product line. It is the second of three releases for Bowman. We had Bowman Baseball earlier this year. Now we have Bowman Chrome. And later this year, we'll get Bowman Draft. But all of these cards are going to be in Chrome. It is in its 25th year of production, started way back in 1997, and this year's set is a 200-card base set checklist. That's going to give you 100 current MLB players plus 100 prospects. Now, the prospect lineup adds 100 cards to the prospect lineup from Bowman Baseball. So in the second release, we now have, from Bowman in 2021, 250 Bowman baseball prospect cards that have been released in 2021. 30 first Bowman cards are available in this base set. So additional first Bowman autos are going to be found in the auto checklist. But for the base set checklist, we've got 30 Bowman first cards that are being released in this release. Also new for 2021, there is a hobby light 
format that has been introduced, which focuses on parallels and non-autos. You can get some black and white mini diamonds that are exclusive to the Hobby Light format. And there will be a retail option, but it's pretty limited and it's going to be hard to find. It is the Mega Box. They did that in 2020. I believe they're going to do it again in 2021. For the Parallel Rainbow, the base set, the 100 current MLB players, the rookies and the veterans, you're going to get a 10 color base set rainbow. But for the prospects, you're going to get a 21 color rainbow for your parallels. There will be rookie image variations available in 2021. There are also three new inserts available for 2021. We've got the 40 man futures, the 2020 summer camp and the Bowman ascensions, which will be a case hit out of the hobby boxes. And finally relics and auto relics are going to be available in this set as well. So what are the different buying formats we can get? Well, we've expanded that in 2021, as I just mentioned, but we'll start with a hobby case. That's going to have 12 boxes per case, 12 packs per box, five cards per pack. So that's going to give you 720 total cards. Those are going for about $2,450 right now with a cost per card of $3.40, pretty high. But what you are guaranteed to get are 24 different autos and 12 shimmer refractors. If you don't have $2,000 plus sitting around, drop down to a hobby box. It's going to have 12 packs per box. Five cards per pack, 60 total cards, cost you about 210 bucks. So your cost per card creeps up to $3.50. You're going to get two autos and one shimmer refractor. They also have the HTA choice case. There's going to be 12 boxes in that case. One pack per box, three cards per pack, but they're all autoed. So that's 36 total cards. Cost on that $2,640. Cost per card, an astronomical $73.33, which actually isn't bad considering that every card is autoed. You're going to get 36 guaranteed autos. For the box, you're going to get the same thing. One pack per box, three cards per pack, three total cards, all of them autoed. Cost you about $225 currently. Your cost per card, $75. Bucks. You're going to get three autos. But you also have the new light case. That's going to have 16 boxes per case, 10 packs per box, five cards per pack. So 800 total cards. Cost on that right now is $3,300. Cost per card on that, $4.13. But you are guaranteed to get 80. That's right, 80 black and white mini diamond refractors. For your light box, same setup. You've got 10 packs per box, five cards per pack, 50 total cards, $210 current price. And the cost per card on that, $4.20. Guaranteed to get five black and white mini diamond refractors. And for retail, you're going to have the mega box. That's going to have five packs per box plus two mojo refractor packs. Those each have five cards in each pack. So you get a total of 35 cards and they'll be about 50 bucks. Cost per card comes all the way down to $1.42 and you are guaranteed to get 10 Mojo refractors. There also could be some additional retail formats floating around in there that haven't been announced. So be on the lookout for that. Not guaranteed, but it's always possible. Tops Bowman loves to throw surprises out like that from time to time. So let's cover off on the parallels, such an important part of the Bowman lineup. So for the base set parallels, like I mentioned, we've got a 10 color rainbow. You got refractors, purple, fuchsia, blue, green, yellow, gold, orange, red, and superfractor all coming down in numbers as you go farther down the list. For the prospect set parallels, so this is the prospect cards, it expands out a lot. We've got that light exclusive black and white mini diamond. They are not numbered. And then you also in hobby are going to find those shimmer cards. Those aren't numbered, but you do get a refractor, a speckle, purple, purple shimmer, fuchsia and a fuchsia shimmer, blue, aqua, green, a green shimmer. And you've got even more. You've got the yellow, gold, gold shimmer, orange, uh, orange shimmer, red, red shimmer. There's new. We've got the black shimmer, which is a one of one and a super fractor one of one. Obviously awesome if you can hit a couple of those, uh, but pretty long odds. So big color rainbow that we have for Bowman Chrome in 2021. So what are the key cards we're going to be chasing? 
Well, first, I normally cover off on rookies here, but let's just dive into the prospects. There's plenty of rookies that are available in the set, basically all of the ones we've been chasing all season. But let's cover off on the key prospects that we're looking for. These are all going to be first Bowman cards, and these are the ones that I think are going to hold a little bit more value on the secondary market. First, we have Victor Acosta. He's with the Padres. We have Jefferson Guerrero, uh, he's from Milwaukee. We have Pedro Leon on Houston. Eduardo Garcia uh, with Milwaukee. Luis Rodriguez, a big one here. Probably going to be the biggest card of the set out of the blocks. That's with the Dodgers. And also Wilman Diaz, another nice card for the Dodgers. We have Yiddy Cappy with the Marlins. Pedro Pineda with Oakland. And we have Shaylin Polanco with the Pirates. And Malcolm Nunez with the Cardinals. And Luis Torabio with the Giants. And finally, we have Carlos Colmenares with Tampa Bay. Oh, wait, we do have one more on there. There's Armando Cruz with the Nationals. So these are going to be kind of the bigger ones. Obviously, there's more, but these are the ones that I think are going to be kind of the big key ones coming out of the blocks. For our parallels, our variations, our autos, relics, inserts, first, Key cards, always those first Bowman parallels and autos. They hold a ton of value, very sought after cards in the industry. And with Bowman Chrome, you've got those rookie image variations. Those are some very sought after cards as well. And then we have the new Bowman Ascensions inserts. Those were actually done by Tyson Beck, a very well-known artist within the Tops universe. Uh, so he's designed those. You can see what those look like over on the right. Those are going to be case hits, and you can get them as autoed. We have the Arizona Fall League flashback relics. And we also have the All-America Game autos. Not sure who's going to be on that checklist yet, but the All-America Games, that has been a very popular thing in the past with Bowman. We have the Chrome Rookie Autos, so we can get some rookie autos out of here. And we have Chromed Autographed Relics, which feature some really big names in the sport today. We also have the Prime Choice Signatures. Those are going to be pretty low-numbered signatures if you can hit some of those. And the Rookie Image Variation Autos, some very nice cards right there. So what are the different inserts we can get? Well, we've got the 40-man futures. That's going to have 30 cards, and they're going to land one in three hobby packs. A small parallel rainbow of Atomic, Orange, and Super Fractor. We have the 2020 Summer Camp. That's going to have 30 cards falling one in six packs with that same parallel breakdown. The Summer Camp cards feature the camps that happened in 2020 because there was no minor league games that happened last year. You can also get a short print that's only going to have one card. It's Spencer Torkelson, and there is a parallel Super Fractor, one of one. The Bowman Ascensions, again, this is a case hit. There's 24 cards in that subset and parallels of Orange and Super Fractor. Finally, Dawn of Glory returns again in 2021. You can see what that looks like over on the right. That's going to be 15 cards in that set. Land 1 in 12 packs with an Atomic Orange and Super Fractor Parallel Rainbow. For our relics and auto relics, not a big lineup here, but we do have a couple. First, we have the AFL flashback relics. Those are going to land for hobby boxes, only 24 cards in that subset with an orange and super fractor parallel rainbow and the chrome autograph relics. Some very big names on this checklist. You can see the Mike Trout over there on the right. There's 11 cards in that checklist and we have a parallel rainbow of gold orange which is exclusive to hobby and super fractor so now we get to the autographs the all-important autographs from bowman chrome makes or breaks the set every year we start with the 40 man futures autos there's going to be 20 cards in that set they're all going to be numbered to 99 and a parallel rainbow of orange to 25 and super fractor one of one the summer camp autos there's going to be 20 cards in that set with a super fractor one of one parallel and we have the summer camp sp auto that's going to be spencer torkelson again each one of those is going to be numbered to 100 we have the all america game autos the list uh, is still tbd on this one but always some big names from the all america game that happens every year we also have the bowman ascension autos keep in mind this is a case hit so if you can pull an auto out of this this would be real nice 15 cards in that subset with the super fractor parallel 
there's more autos. The ones that everyone's looking for. We've got the Bowman Chrome Prospect Autos. 86 cards on that checklist. A gigantic parallel rainbow on this with very much exclusive stuff to the HTA, exclusive stuff to the hobby, exclusive to the light format in the buying options. So obviously a big one, I'm not gonna read them all off here, but just know that the oranges land in hobby only, the black and white mini diamonds are with light. And then there's like the shimmer ones and a few HTA choice refractors that are gonna land in the HTA boxes only. There are also rookie autos. So we've got the Chrome rookie autos, 15 cards in that subset with a fairly decent parallel rainbow refractor, blue, green, gold, orange, available on hobby only, a red and a super fractor. There's even more autos. We have the Dawn of Glory autos, 10 cards in that subset with an orange and super fractor parallel rainbow. The prime choice signatures, which you can see what that looks like over on the right, 24 cards in that subset, each numbered to 50 with a parallel breakdown of orange to 25 and a super fractor one of one. And the rookie image variation auto, some very sought after cards right there, gonna be four cards in that subset. So now that we know what we can pull out of Bowman Chrome, the question becomes, who should we be targeting in breaks? Well, I'm gonna give you six different teams here and maybe a seventh if you're lucky. I'm gonna give you who I think the best team is, the team that has the most value. I'm gonna give you a solid choice, a couple sleepers, and I'm even gonna tell you the team that has the most autos. So let's start with who I think is the best team. And a little bit of a surprise here, I'm going with the Milwaukee Brewers. They've only got two base cards, but they do have five Chrome Prospect cards, and four of those are first Bowman cards. There's three inserts, one relic, and 14 autos where you're going to find additional first Bowman cards as well. And the Brewers have a very solid minor league organization. They've had some great draft picks lately. There's some great names that maybe even aren't first Bowman, but if you can pull one of their autos, very nice. Um, I think consistently what you're going to find is this might not be the most expensive team, but it's going to return the most value for every break that you buy into. So whether you're buying a pick your team and you get it at a nice price, if you hit them in a random team break, that's fantastic. I think you're going to find a nice return consistently from the Milwaukee Brewers. But if you're looking for the most autos, go to the Chicago White Sox. They've got six base cards. Four of those are going to be rookie cards. There are two Chrome Prospect cards. None of them are first Bowmans, but wait, there are six inserts, one relic, and there are 14 different autos. And that's where you're going to find the Chicago White Sox first Bowman cards. Some of those are going to hold some nice value. There's a ton of different autos on there. You can even get some rookie autos and whatnot. Some very nice autos, a very good team to get, whether or not it is in a pick your team or a random team break, or if you're doing a case break or a single box break, something like that. I think the Chicago White Sox is going to be a consistent team break in and break out. But if you're looking for a solid choice and maybe a little bit of a sleeper here, look at the Chicago Cubs. They've got three base cards. One of them's going to be a rookie card and they've got five Chrome prospect cards and two of those are first Bowman cards. They've got three different inserts, one relic, and they've got a decent amount of autos. They've got 10 autos and five of those are first Bowman autos. And when you look even beyond the first Bowmans, you've got names like Ed Howard in there. And it's just a very solid team, very solid checklist from top to bottom for the Chicago Cubs. So if you can get them at the right price at a pick your team, don't go past the Chicago Cubs. If you hit them in a random team break, I would say keep them because I think you're going to get a nice little return on your investment there. But if you're looking for the team with the most value, I'm going to say the Pittsburgh Pirates and I'm going to get grilled for it in the comments. I'm sure comment below right now and tell me that I'm wrong because I think a lot of people are going to say the Los Angeles Dodgers have the most value. But the reason I'm going with the Pirates and not the Dodgers. First, the Dodgers, they do have some very big names and some cards that are going to hold a ton of value out of the blocks, but they just don't have the amount of cards that I think you're going to need for consistent break return. And that's what I'm looking for here. So the Pittsburgh Pirates do check that box and they've got some very nice names on their checklist as well. What they have is three base cards, 
One rookie card, obviously, that's going to be Cabrian Hayes. They've got four Chrome Prospect cards, and three of those are first Bowmans. They've got eight different inserts, one Relic, and eight Autos, and the Autos that you can get are all going to be nice ones. They're a very solid team that you're going to be able to probably get. It's going to be expensive, but I don't think they're going to be as expensive as the Dodgers will. And I think long term, because of the draft picks and the high number of draft picks and the high level of draft picks that the Pirates have had, I think you're going to find that the Pirates are going to hold value long term just as much as the Dodgers will. The Dodgers, you can make a case that they would be the most valuable team as well. Luis Rodriguez is going to drive that. Um, so definitely look at the Dodgers as well. But the Pittsburgh Pirates, that's who I'm going with. Definitely check out the Pirates if you can get them in a random team break. Hold, hold, hold. A pick your team break if you can get it at the right price. A fantastic team to get. But if you're looking for a few sleepers, look at to the Northwest and go to Seattle. We've got the Mariners. They've got two base cards, one rookie card, five Chrome prospect cards. Two of those are going to be first Bowmans. And then you've got six inserts, one relic, and a surprising number of autos here. You've got 12 different autos. Some of those are going to be first Bowman autos that you can't find in the base set checklist. And I think that this is a team that in a random team break, if you can trade for the Mariners, if you don't get them, I think you could probably pull that off. And to pick your team break, they should probably be a little bit more on the expensive side because of the amount of autos. But I think that a lot of people kind of overlook the Mariners because they do play in the Northwest and just not as sought after as some of the other teams. But I think the Mariners are going to be a pretty good sleeper if you can get them at the right price or steal them in a random team break, something like that. So look at the Mariners. My other sleeper, going to be a little bit of a surprise here, the Red Sox. They've got four base cards, two rookie cards, six Chrome prospect cards. Only one of those is a first Bowman. Uh, they do have five inserts, one relic, and they've got nine autos. But the auto lineup is absolutely loaded. You've got Blaze Jordan in there. You've got Jaron Duran in there. There's a lot of autos that are going to hold a lot of value. And I think the Red Sox, because they don't have a ton of autos, they've got a decent amount, but they don't have a ton. I think the Red Sox are going to be a pretty nice team and I think you could probably steal them. The Red Sox have not been a team all card season that a lot of people chase kind of middle of the road. So if you can make a trade for them, if you can get the right price and pick your team, you're doing great there. And I think especially for like case breaks and stuff like that, the Red Sox are going to be a nice return on investment. So those are the teams that I'm going to target for breaks in Bowman Chrome 2021. So what are the overall set positives of Bowman Chrome? Well, first and foremost, it's one of the most popular sets every year in the hobby. Obviously, everyone collects Bowman for those first Bowman cards, but the Chrome cards hold a little bit of additional value over the paper ones that we find in draft and that we find in Bowman baseball. This is the only one where they're all going to be Chrome. So that's why people love chasing Bowman Chrome. Historically, it holds a ton of value as well. Um, there are lots of highly rated international prospects that are featured in this particular set. You've got the Luis Rodriguez in there, and there's plenty of other names. So definitely, if you like international prospects, Bowman Chrome, definitely a set that you want to be taking a look at. I also like that they've expanded the buying options to allow for more collectors to get in and at a price point that they're comfortable with. It's not just hobby and HTA. They've got the light, which is a little bit less expensive. They've still got the mega boxes that are going to be coming out this year. So you can get in for 50, you can get it for 200. So lots of different buying options that you can get depending on what you're looking for. If you're looking for parallels, go light. If you're looking for autos, go HTA. If you're looking for a little bit of both, go hobby. If you like Mojo Refractors, go over to the Mega Boxes. And also, having a hard to pull relic, or actually that should say insert, in Bowman Ascensions makes for a nice chase beyond the autos and the parallels. So I like that they've got a case hit in there. It's one of the insert sets. So a little bit of an additional hit that you might be able to find if you get lucky. Kind of cool that they did that for Bowman Chrome this year. And don't forget, even though we're focused so much on the prospects, we, there's a very strong rookie lineup for the variation cards and the autos from the rookies that you can get in this set as well. So don't look past that. If you like collecting rookie cards, this is a surprisingly good set to collect. 
finally, the cards all are hold exceptional value on the secondary market. It is one of the most valuable cards, the first Bowman cards, if not the most valuable. So definitely, definitely Bowman Chrome, if you're someone that likes investing, a hard set to pass up on from an investing standpoint. But with all the positives, of course, there's going to be negatives as well. My first one is going to be that the cost per card is pretty high in almost every format. Although the cost per auto is lower than Bowman Baseball was. So you don't get as many cards, but the cost per auto is actually lower than it was in Bowman Baseball. So keep that in mind. But when we're above $3 and in some cases even $4 in a cost per card, not every one of those cards is going to be worth that much. So you got to keep that in mind and know that going in. Also, there's no showstopper first Bowman card out of the blocks. There's ones that are going to hold plenty of value. And keep in mind that there's plenty of future potential anyways. The fact that you've got the international prospects, which have done so well historically in the last 20 years in baseball, even 30 years, a lot of these prospects could end up being huge. But there's no like Jason Dominguez that's coming out of the block. Keep that in mind as you go in. There is no showstopper first Bowman card. And then the fact that we have so many numbered parallels, it does indicate that there's an increased production run over last year. We've seen that across all of the sets in 2021. The demand for the cards is up, so the production run is up, which could hurt its long-term value, especially when you talk about people that go grading. If there's more cards out there. That means more get graded, and graded cards become less valuable the more and more people grade them. If there's 10,000 PSA 10s, then they're not as scarce as everyone would like to think that they are. Also, it's going to be very hard to find the mega boxes because flippers are going to be all over the mega boxes on this one. So if you're lucky enough to find some in the wild, fantastic. My advice, don't buy boxes from the flippers. If you can't find it in retail, just buy the singles that you're looking for instead. You'll save yourself money. You will save yourself a little bit if you're talking about from a investment point of view, you're going to save yourself from trying to pull a card, a pack pulled card. Just go spend the money on the card that you're really looking for, the few cards that you're looking for. That's a better way to do it. Make the flippers open the boxes and then don't buy double the price for a Bowman mega box. If you can find it in the wild, great. If you get lucky and can find it online, fantastic. But if you can't do that, buy the singles or just move over to the hobby format. Finally, Although I love that there are relics in the set, the AFL relics do feel a bit awkward because there wasn't any AFL games last year. So that's why they're doing the throwback stuff. It just doesn't seem to have a lot of relevance. It'll be nice that that game's going to happen this year, but it's a little awkward and that's a little nitpicky. I get it, but I feel like maybe we could have gone a different way with the relics in 2021. So that brings us to our one cent sensational set ranking for 2021 Bowman Chrome. How good is Bowman Chrome? Well, let's find out. We're going to use our scoring system here on the left. And like I said, we break it down into 10 different categories. Our first category going to be appeal. I'm going to go ahead and give it a nine. People love Bowman in the hobby. The reason I did not give it a 10, I think the price point is just a little bit too high still, but with Appeal, a very popular product, I'm going to give it a 9. For the base set checklist, a very solid checklist, not fantastic by Bowman standards, so I'm going to go ahead and give it a 7.5. For our inserts and relics, I'm going to pull it back all the way to a 7. Some very nice inserts in regards to Bowman Ascensions and the fact that they brought Tyson Beck in to do those. That's really cool. The relics, I think, maybe missed the mark a little bit. I like that they're in there. I'm not a big fan of Donna Glory. They brought that back, but we do have three new insert sets, so I go ahead and give it a 7. For the parallels and variations, I'm giving it a 10. You can't get any better parallels and variations than Bowman Chrome. So let's give it a 10. For our auto checklist, again, like I said, no big showstopper, but plenty of first Bowman cards to pull. So I'm going to go ahead and give the auto checklist a 7. For our pack odds and production, Bowman Chrome is going to get produced more this year, but... I still think that it's produced less than Bowman Baseball, so I'm going to go ahead and give it a 6. The odds are going to be fairly decent, but still pretty long as well. For card quality, 
I love the Bowman Chrome stock. Everyone loves it. However, we have seen a lot of quality control issues. So I think the stock and everything, the card itself will be awesome, but we kind of have to take a wait and see approach to see how centered everything is, how the cuts on the cards are. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a six. For historical value, I'm giving it a nine. A lot of these cards will go on to hold a ton of value later on and right out of the blocks, they're going to hold value as well. So I give it a nine, maybe not quite as much as Bowman Draft, so we're not giving it a 10, but historically a very good set in regards to value. For artistic value, I'm going to give it a 7.5. As most of you know, I love the design that they've done for Bowman 2021. The fact that we do have three of the new inserts, one of those with Tyson Beck, very cool there. So uh, pushing the envelope a little bit on the artistic side. So I give it a 7.5. And for cost value, I'm going to give it a 7. I think that you can get a lower cost per card in that retail format, which is nice. Plus you get those Mojo refractors. They've got the light format that you can buy into, although that is no less expensive now than the hobby boxes. But I think depending on what you're looking for and the value that you're going to get in return, it's a better product than most in regards to cost versus the return that you get. So I go ahead and give it a seven. So what we're going to do, we're going to add all these up and we will see how good the set is based upon our ranking system to the left. And for 2021, Bowman Chrome gets a final rating of 76. So a very solid four-star set. We miss a little bit in regards to there not being a huge name out of the blocks, but some very good international prospects that have been highly rated, that have signed. We've got a lot of young, young prospects that have got first Bowman cards that could produce and develop into great future stars in the major leagues. We've got case hits with the Bowman Ascensions. We've got some nice rookie autos, some rookie auto variations, but we've got a little bit of an experience expensive product. We've got some quality issues that we're probably going to see out of this. And I think overall, if you like collecting prospects, obviously this is a huge set. If you're a more budget-minded collector, you may want to pass on this and maybe just buy some singles. But overall, if we talk about if this set is a bust, I don't believe that it is. I think it's a pretty solid set. I'm going to go ahead and give it 76, a nice four-star rating for 2021 Bowman Chrome. Now in 2020, the set also scored a 76. So we're right on par with what we scored this with last year. Last year had some very big names in it as well. It has held its value. So I think 76 was the right score last year. And I think Bowman Chrome doing what it's done so well for 25 years, a model of consistency in regards to some very nice Chrome prospect cards, Definitely, definitely a nice set. So where does Bowman Chrome rank in all of the sets that we have done reviews on so far in 2021? Well, we use our same ranking system and Bowman Chrome comes in as the third ranked set for 2021 at 76. Bowman Baseball, which was released a little bit earlier this year, just a little bit better because of some of the names, I would say, and a little bit more popular. That came in at a 77.5. Tops Chrome still ruling the day with a sensational set score of 80. And falling out of the top 10 is Tops Finest, a very nice product, but that has a 67.5 sensational set score. And as has been the theme throughout 2021, Tops dominating the top 10. We've got one Panini product still in there, Panini Select at 70, but for the most part, tops dominating the baseball card collecting season in regards to the one cent sensational set ranking. So congrats to them, but Panini still has a few nice sets coming out, Spectra, and they've got Mosaic coming out. So we'll see if Panini can make a late season run to get a few more sets into the top 10. But for now, we've got Bowman Chrome in the top 10. Let me know in the comments below if you think that ranking is too high. 
if you think it's too low. And be sure to throw over to first, hit that like button for me if you like these set reviews. It's the best way you can support the channel. And be sure to subscribe so that way you can see all of the set reviews. And if you want to see them first, you got to hit that bell notification. So hit that while you're at it. In the meantime, I hope that as you guys are buying into breaks and you guys are uh, ripping packs of Bowman Chrome, I wish you the best of luck on your pack pulls. And until next time, be good to your family. Be good to your friends, be good to your neighbors, and take care. Thanks for watching.